So hello everybody, this Friday, so it's time for another Tax Fridays, a new tax function every Friday. In today's Tax Fridays, we're going to talk about why tax is so complicated or can be so hard. The thing that makes it hard is the thing that makes it good. But let's go through it. I have a perfect example for you guys. Okay, so I was actually working on another video. I came across this example like that this is a perfect example to explain what the complexities of DAX can be. So what we're going to do is a very, very simple example that exemplifies why grading DAX measures can be so difficult sometimes. This is what we're going to do. I have here, this is the Northwind data set that we always use. I have a calendar that is filtered to today's date, the 15th of January 2021. And then I have a measure that has previous year, no, uh, previous day on it. So it's maybe basically previous day and then the calendar date. So if I throw previous, not previous year, previous day in here, and put it as a card, what is given us is what we expected, right? It is the first, the, the day before whatever day has been filtered. You can see the filter in here. It says it is filtered on January 15th, so the previous day is going to be January 14th. It gives us that beautiful. Now, the, the great thing about DAX is one measure can return different results depending on the filters that are applied to it. And that is the thing that makes it complicated because you don't always see what filters are applied and you have to just make that mental math on your brain. So. In this example, if instead of picking just one date, we pick a range of dates on a card, this is that we get a different result. So why do we get that result? If we look in the filter, it says that this is the filter is a date that is from the 20th of March onwards. So this is today's date. So what it's giving us is the previous day of the first day of that list of dates. And that's exactly what it says on the documentation. It says it returns a table not a uh, one value it returns a table that contains a column of all dates representing the date that is previous to the first date in the date column okay in current context it could be even more filters around that could affect that right now just to simplify and show you just just one filter so as you can see we have a range of dates if we put it on a card it's always going to give us the first one of the list but if we would put that into table, then you will see the, the full thing. You will see that it returns a table. This is the table. And then it goes from the first one and it starts to see, okay, the 20th, then it's the 19th, the 21st is the 20th. So it returns the previous day of each row on the table. Wonderful, right? Now, there's still another scenario where it can return something else. If we go and you might think that, okay, in the here, I'm filtering between the, what does it say? Is, uh, I think this is an American format. No, no. It's in, yeah, the 16th of March of 2019 to the 1st of, you know, to today's date, January 15th. And here it says blank. Why is it giving us blank? If you go to the filters, this is a very useful thing to use just to check the filters applied to visually. It definitely helps. If you, virtual tables have been calculated in the background, not that easy. But for these type of simple measures, it helps. As you can see here, there's no filters applied to the previous day calculation, so it returns blank. It doesn't know what filters. There's no filter applied, so it cannot give you a previous day of nothing. <laughs> That's why it is blank. So as you can see, one formula, four different scenarios, four different results, right? So in order to create the DAX, you need to always understand what filters are being applied around your measure. And you can have filters everywhere, which makes things a lot complicated. And then if you have a model, you have, you know, filter transition where the filters get from one table to another or not, depending on what you're doing it. And that's when things start to get complicated. So in order to be good at creating DAX measures or learning DAX, you have to stop thinking the way you do it in Excel. 
you have a formula and you know for sure what the result will be. Here you don't know. You have to figure out. If you get an unexpected result, you have to figure out what filters are being applied in there that makes it behave the way it does. And it could be easy, it could be complicated, depending on how many filters you have applied to that measure, basically. So, yeah, I hope that this clarifies why DAX can be so complex and the things that you could do to, to learn it and to figure out what's going on. So if you are a beginner in DAX, I have actually a playlist for you of videos to, I think it's in there, <laughs> videos to start working on, grasping the concepts and hopefully making your DAX learning path flatter and easier. So I will see you on Monday. Until then, take care. Bye bye.